Hey, this is Paul Hamilton with Sensible Portfolios. In the next few minutes, I'm going to run through how you sign up for Right Capital. As a client of ours, you apparently have received or will receive a link that will open you to this page. And you enter your email. I hear I've entered my wife's. hope she doesn't mind. And a password. Uh, and then we'll create an account. I'm not sure. I guess let's remember. So it's a six-step process here, and um, you're going to enter some details about your family, if it's living with you or income dependent on you, I guess is another way of saying that, your income, uh, various sources, savings, uh, what assets you already have and liabilities, how much you spend, and then some goals in your life. So I'm going to make this pretty simple here. So one thing... It, Populates each of these with some kind of most likely things. Of course, if you're single, you could just go ahead and do this anyway. We'll say my wife is single. Ouch. Okay. Uh, oh. Not, oh, there we go. Delete. Okay. So here it's it's already um, picked up her name. It's guessed her age, 48. All right. Uh, Alabama, no. Uh, Let's, let's go ahead and put uh, Nevada, since most of our clients will be there. And you can enter some other information here. You can change this, of course. And in, in for quickness here, I, I, I'm going to leave it. The planning horizon, and there's, you can see this in here, uh, age when the person is assumed to die. So that, that's a little bit different than life expectancy. I, I would really say that is the... Um, the the longest age this person may live. And of course, you could live to 120, um, which you could put here, or you could put it shorter. But um, I, I usually just leave that at 90. Sometimes people like to go to 100, which pretty much exhausts anyone's ability to, to reach that age. So we could add uh, children here. We could add back a spouse, a grandchild. Again, if they're living with you or income uh, dependent on you. Uh, again, the sake of time, I'm just going to leave it as a single 48-year-old, uh, okay? So salary. Uh, here, uh, typically you're going to go from already started, but you could start in the future or a certain age for Anne. Um, let's just say it's already started and it's going to end at her retirement, which we'll send set at a later point. And we'll say Ann makes $100,000, and she gets a 3% raise each year, and it is it's part of, uh, it's taxed under Social Security. Save. For Social Security, uh, it can be anywhere between 62 and 70. We're actually going to go to 67 is the full retirement age for someone who's in their 40s now. There's various ways you can estimate it. You could, they could base it on what her income is now going forward. Um, if you um, if you get a if you're over 50 or 55, you can look you get this in the mail or you can look it up at Social Security uh, Administration's website. What your projected primary insurance amount is. So we'll say it's. $2,000, and that's that's fairly typical. A max is roughly about 2800 now, I believe. Uh, the average Social Security benefit's about 1300 so if you're making about $40,000, it would be much lower than this. Anyway, not commentary. Okay. And then there's various other incomes you could add. If you're self-employed, that's taxed a little bit differently with payroll taxes. You're receiving money for a child or alimony. Again, this is money that you're receiving, not paying. Uh, royalties, uh, a pension in the future or, or now, uh, even an inheritance or distribution uh, from your retirement accounts. You could do all those. Again, we're trying to keep it simple. So we're going to go to the next step. So now we're, yeah, that, so that was income uh, for Ann. Now we're on the savings step. And again, it adds a couple of these. There's all kinds of things you can add. It can be a little imposing because there's so many different kinds of types of um, taxable accounts. You 
hopefully anyway, recognize which one 401k is by far the most popular. If you're in a nonprofit, it's, it's exactly the same. It's just called a 403b. Roths are different. You pay the taxes up front, and then they're tax-free. If you're self-employed, uh, again, you might have some of these health savings accounts, 529 for uh, education. Uh, Tax-free would be like a municipal bond or something you bought. But let's just go over here to Ann's 401k. It could be a percentage of salary. Uh, sometimes I like to put an annual dollar amount, or you can even put the maximum if you put in 18500 uh, And then that goes up uh, in future years. Uh, let's just do a percentage of salary, okay? So maybe, maybe they put in 5%. Uh, and she gets, this, this isn't always true, but we'll assume she gets a 100% match on that 5%. Okay. And save. Uh, for taxable, uh, we could have her putting money into a mutual fund or stocks or some other thing. Let's um, say she doesn't do that. So this is one of the most um, important screens because you're entering probably several pieces of information. Now I'll, I'll note right this is where you, you basically enter everything. Oh, not everything, but the important things. You can, if you're familiar with Mint or maybe some other apps are out there, you can actually link your account. So you can find um, there's not just these dozen, there's hundreds, maybe thousands. There's not, if you have a real small local bank or some something that, anyway, there might be a few that aren't on there. I, I don't advise it against right from the start doing this, okay? Uh, you do have to enter, you have to go to the, your you know, USAA site and enter, uh, basically give them access uh, to uh, ring that site every so often. The security is, is it's never been a problem. Some people just hate the idea of entering their passwords and what have you. So I, for the most part, I don't think it's, it's a, um, uh, you can basically do almost everything you would need other than getting ongoing updates from all your accounts. So if you do link account, you might just link your checking account or credit card account to track spending. Uh, for other things, investments and that, it's easy enough to just track it manually. Okay, so we're going to add some of the main accounts. So we'll have a, a bank account, and and we'll just put in the amount here. It's very simple, and save. You can see over there, our net worth went up. We're going to say she already had a. Um, this is where it gets more interesting. She already has some assets in her four hundred one k. You can. Uh, this is where you're not linking directly to your account, but if, if you do have uh, a statement or you get on their website, you may be able to look up all the holdings. And if it's a 401k, it may be dozens, if not more, that they're of various stocks and what have you that they're holding. So um, so we're not we're not going to do that. Okay. Uh, a simpler way, and and this is, again is just. Can, can be fairly accurate, or at least ballpark accurate. It's a bit different, uh, but you can go to say, so, "Oh yeah," say, "Well, maybe she has, um, I mean, just in general, in U.S. stocks, uh, she has one hundred thousand dollars in that, and then we'll have she has some maybe international stocks. Oops, sometimes it does this; it gets a little." Um, if it was a taxable account, you have to put what's called in the basis, what you essentially paid for it. Here, though, you paid, you just contributed the amount. There's no basis for your typical retirement account. So and let's just say she has you know, 50000 already in there. All right, you can see the total going up. And then we could keep going, you know, maybe she has some U.S. bonds. complain. 
to write capital. All right, here we go. Uh, so in the end, yeah, just make sure you have the right kind of account. Uh, you can see here the total cash would be essentially just that. Um, most accounts have little or no cash. It's an investment account, but they might have five or ten percent uh, of essentially very safe money. So we'll save that. And uh, I wanted to just add a couple more things here. Uh, these two go together. So property. Primary home. All right. Um, so yeah, can sometimes you can just click over here and you could enter the information. So maybe you do rent, but let's say she owns and uh, purchase price two hundred thousand. It could appreciate over time. To be conservative, we'll say it doesn't. Uh, the current value maybe it hasn't appreciated a little bit. It'll make this feel better. Okay. You can, you can enter information on property taxes and insurance. And uh, you don't enter your mortgage here yet, though. So this is um, uh, the original here. Okay, so I'm going to save and save this. So, yeah, this is just the asset, I should say. Uh, then we go to a loan. And, well, and we can go ahead and link it to the primary home or we could have given it a name and now it's a mortgage so um, the yeah, that's a TV or mortgage and the original amount was let me go over it $200,000 home made so maybe 150,000 monthly payment and this includes only the mortgage itself, not the, uh, a lot of times people have their property taxes paid as part of that check and, or the insurance. Uh, so we'll say $200,000. And the balance is what's still there. So uh, 2010. And um, yeah, so th there's there's all kinds of other things you could add. You could add term insurance, or if you have some permanent insurance, uh, other types of loans, um, credit cards, all types of investments. Uh, so it's as detailed as probably your your life may be detailed. But for most people, it's you know they might have five or six things: a home, a couple of bank accounts, a couple of credit cards. Uh, one thing I'll note is you don't have to track everything. So if you have a credit card, or, which you just use, and or you don't use maybe, <laughs> except very occasionally, or if you have, um, you know, you say, well, what about my furniture, personal, you know, household items, or what have you? Th those are basically depreciating. <laughs> uh, occasionally, I guess people like to think they're they've invested in furniture or a TV or something, but probably not. Okay. Uh, so you, you could include those if you want it. You felt like your net worth that made you feel better to include those. But what the program is really getting at is assets that, um, especially financial assets, that could be used to finance your retirement and, and other things like college and what have you. Okay. So that is that. Uh, next screen here, expenses, uh, pre-retirement living expenses. Say four thousand uh, dollars. Tax expense. We'll say she faces a three percent county or city tax. The rest of this is stuff that relates to uh, investments, and for the most part, I would say don't worry about those. The one exception might be if you do have some 
major losses, say from the Great Recession. You could put those in there, and that would be factored into the tax analysis, but we'll suppose that Ann doesn't. And uh, so there's other expenses. We could add, if you want to designate, this really affects uh, the um, taxes. So if you have significant charitable, you know, deductible charitable giving, medical expenses, out-of-pocket, major out-of-pocket, uh, if you're paying alimony, if you want to distinguish that. You can do other stuff here too, so we can just click on it and then um, you could add, have Anne buying a boat a year from now or maybe, you know, uh, re, uh, 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 restoring the house, you know, redoing the kitchen or something for 20000 We'll say we don't want to confuse ourselves with that for now. Or uh, One thing, you can always go back if you do kind of the base plan. You go like, yeah, I'd, I'd kind of like to add in our... Uh, our uh, our vacation home cost or a vacation once a year so we have that kind of budgeted you can always do that last step is goals and here they've um, again guessed that she's going to retire at 65 we're going to say 67 uh, she was spending 4,000 pre-retirement we'll say she keeps it the same okay. and that's money oops it's a good example of not being careful. If you don't click save, then that doesn't change. They do give some annual retirement account. I guess that's a national average paying for Medicare premiums and Medigap. You can change that. Likewise, for long-term care, uh, we'll say Ann's kind of one hall shea is what I call it. She's going to go strong and then all right, so that that's it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's we could double check. Anyways, we can go back and change. So let's go ahead and hit complete. And that was our profile now. So we can still see you know our goals and income things that we've set up. Uh, what you can see when you first open the plan is something like this. Uh, it's not very detailed. It's uh, Really, the main thing that you would see is your balance sheet. So her assets of four hundred thirty thousand, her hundred twenty thousand dollar mortgage, and the difference leaving her a net worth of three hundred ten thousand. The details are down here, so you could double check those. And then historical, that's only after you've, you know, had this account open for several months, maybe or at least a month or so, to get some information. Uh, liquidity is just making sure basically she has enough money for say three months or six months of paying bills if she got unemployed. And the budget, that only works when you've linked a checking account or credit or card account. So so this isn't all that interesting uh, right now. If you come back, uh, well, what you need to do then, once you're here, you can say, is that it? Uh, you've done all the hard work. Uh, now what we'll see, we'll actually get an email that you've entered your information. There's just a couple buttons we hit on our side, which will then give you, and I'll show this in the next video, uh, about a half dozen different options on retirement projections, tax projections, insurance planning, college planning, etc. So I'll pick up here in the next video.